Hi guys, how you doing? Uh, this is just a quick video, I've got 15 minutes, so I thought I'd rattle through something quickly. Um, today's topic is fat loss, I guess. Yeah, probably nutrition, fat loss. Uh, since the last few have been a bit more about training, um, although they are obviously tied in. But as some of you might know, um, Fiona, one of the boot camp girls, has asked myself, Ryan and Andy, well she asked me if a few of us would be willing to get involved in this charity calendar for guide for guide dog training um, for the blind so Andy and Ryan have kindly agreed to do it with me so there's three of us doing this photo shoot for thing in four weeks um, so obviously the, the thought of having a photo taken on our tops off means we're wanting to try and lean up a wee bit so the last next four weeks um, I'm, I'll be trying to sort of focus a bit more on, on nutrition and stuff like that uh, and I thought well, I might as well make a video about what that might entail um, and how it could relate to your own nutrition so obviously there's a huge variety of people at the boot camp in terms of like, um, weight, body fat levels, ageing and stuff like that um, so what you might find is that simply if you're new to it and your diet was really bad before and that you'd maybe got a lot of body fat to lose that just simply making some seemingly subtle changes is enough for you to make good pretty good progress, um, which is excellent, of course. Um, on the other hand, some of you who are maybe like pretty lean now, um, um, or have made really good progress and maybe have stalled and don't really know where to turn to next, may need to sort of hone in a wee bit more on nutrition, in much the same way as I'll be doing over the next four weeks, just to sort of try and tighten up a wee bit, or dial it in as I like to call it. Um, so, on, on, on that same note, in the last few weeks I've got quite a, a lot of really good um, like progress emails from various boot campers, like long term ones, um, people that have been doing it for a year or more, some that have maybe like made initial progress, then stalled, and then made further progress recently, so I've, I've, made, a, I've made a point of asking quite a few of them what it is they've done differently, and what I've noticed is that on all the replies, including ones of from year, just generally over the years, like success leaves clues, um, and so the answers tend to leave clues as well. Um, and it's not to say that any one of the things that they do is the key, as more an accumulative effect of doing all these things more consistently or better, is the result of further progress. Um, so, for example, like quite commonly, a lot of them will say stuff like. It sounds common sense, but they'll say like, "Well, I stopped drinking so much alcohol." Um, it doesn't mean they've gone teetotal, but they've just drank it less frequently and they've drank less of it when they do drink. So that might sound obvious, but it's amazing like how maybe people overlook that or over overlook that simple sort of tweak. Um, cut out junk food. Um, again, it doesn't necessarily mean to not eat any, but just to eat less junk food um, is another one that is quite a common theme. Um, focusing being on, on being more prepared, like realising that um, the key, the difference between usually the difference between eating well and not eating well is preparation. Uh, so that's a common answer that a lot of them write in emails that I just made a point of prioritising food prep a bit more so that I'm not left short and then I'm struggling for food. Then I just grab any old piece of crap that's sitting about or the, at the local Greggs or something. Um, so the, the, there, there are three things that that, come, that sound so obvious. Um, yet that what people do. Um, Quite a common one is I've tried to prioritise sleep a wee bit more. Now, obviously, if you're a new mum, I know there's about 70 new mums at the boot camp. Um, when I say new mum within the first year, um, that's not something they can really control. Like the, um, how much they sleep is quite difficult. Um, but if, if, if improving your sleep is within your control, then try that one as well. Just go to bed a bit earlier um, instead of watching like, an extra episode of your favourite box set, which we're all guilty of, including me. Suits at the moment I'm watching. That guy, Harvey Specter, he's my... He's my man crush at the moment. <laughs> no, I shouldn't be saying that out loud, you know. Anyway, um, moving on swiftly. So, uh, yeah, so it's just wee tweaks like that. Um, obviously, training consistently. Like, so turn up for your sp your sprint session every week. Just start like, do it every week. Don't don't do it one week, then miss a bit next week, then do another week, then miss another week, then do another week. So try and get consistent with that. Uh, and obviously the training. So it's just it's amazing what you can do. Simple tweaks. Um, but moving on from that because. Generally speaking, everyone, whatever you're at, uh, okay, you, 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 your body will find its equilibrium, its, its point of where it's, it's just what it, it's, it sits at in terms of its body fat, and uh, that is simply a reflection of the lifestyle you're leading, um, good, bad, or indifferent. It's not, it's not. I'm not saying that in a judgmental way. I'm just simply saying like your body fat levels will just be a, a sort of reflection of how much food you eat and how much activity you have generally. Um, genetics plays a part, but not a huge part. Um, it certainly isn't a reason to, to or an excuse to, to to not try and get leaner if, if that's something you want to do, especially if your health's at risk um, or potential at risk further down the line. Uh, so 
you have to just consider that and then consider are you actually making real like habitual changes or are you just doing it on the whim for a week um, or a couple of weeks um, so for myself like I, I consistently obviously eat well I don't eat I don't drink a lot of alcohol um, and I don't tend to go go mental on food and I train consistently so getting leaner for me um, is going to be quite tricky actually it's not going to I mean it's, it's going to take more concerted effort and, it, and it, it'll take more focus of the seemingly less important things um, so for in other words for beginners like the biggest things is obviously getting into good eating habits like prioritising protein at meals doing it regularly doing it consistently drinking less alcohol drinking less fizzy juice like less junk food etc walking about more training consistently so these are the things that are just the general big things they, they, they take care of the big things that will get you into really healthy shape but if you're already there, or at least sort of really happy where you are, uh, or not quite happy where you are, and you think, well, I'm doing everything right, I think, then it's it, then it becomes a bit of the more subtle things, the more finer things, or the more finer details, that when you add them up, do start to make a, a difference. Um, so, for example, I tend to drink maybe five or six cups of tea a day. Um, so I'll probably stop doing that. I might just drink one or two. I might even just eventually I'll probably stop drinking tea altogether. I'll just start getting right into the herbal teas. Um, they're really good. Uh, it, just because it all adds up, like there's nothing wrong with some milk in your tea. But if you're, it's wee silly things that can accumulate over over the course of 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 time. And again, I'm only doing that because of this calendar. Shit. I, I, I love my tea and coffee, so I wouldn't just suddenly eliminate it forever. Uh, but certainly in the short term, there's nothing wrong with eliminating things to get you to that next level, and then slowly re reintroducing them again um, if you if you feel you want to. So less less teas is going to be is, or less like milky teas and stuff like that is probably probably going to be one i'll probably do a bit more co-work well i definitely will do a bit of co-work i haven't really done much co-work over the summer so the power wheels will be coming out on that note the power wheels come out on monday and tuesday by the way the the the, the way we've, we use them so much at last bit camp so they'll be out from monday or tuesday um just i'll probably start in a, to eat, eating less dark chocolate I'm addicted to dark chocolate, so I'll eat less of that. Um, I'll probably have less ice cream. Like usually, have ice cream every week. I'll probably have maybe every fortnight or something like that. Um, I'll just eat less sweets. Snacking will stop completely. Um, you, you don't need if you find yourself snacking a lot. It's usually just a sign that you're not maybe eating quite enough at, at, at other meals, um, or you do it out of habit. So I, I very rarely get hungry. Um, and when I do snack, it's just it's more just out of a comfort or habit thing, um, especially at the end of of a session of a boot camp day or something. I'll come in, have a cup of tea and some chocolate and stuff. Um, but that's more out of habit. It's not because I crave it. It's just it's quite a wee comfort. So stuff like that, we'll, we'll, I'll just stop doing for a while. Um, I'll probably we settle things like instead of having a baked potato with tuna mayo, I'll probably ask for like baked potato with just chicken, like just plain chicken and a sprinkle of cheese, just because like obviously there'll be a bit less in the. The, the, the fill and they will less fat obviously in the chicken than they will in tuna mayo it's not that but I, I do prefer tuna mayo but for the next four weeks if I want to make a bit more progress I'll switch to a leaner version which would be chicken um, things so things like that um, maybe try and use a wee bit less oil in, in my when I cook things uh, maybe use a wee bit less butter when I cook things or have so it's wee, it's wee subtle things like that that can all add up um Especially if you are a snacker. Now, as I said, this is, I'm I'm probably talking more here to um, folk that are already like looking already into really good habits on the more general way, and they're just trying to find things to sort of tweak further. Again, it might it, it might not be something as subtle as that. It depends on how strict you are already with your your nutrition, I guess. And again, you don't need to do it. It's only if you're sort of like struggling or wondering why. You feel like you've not changed much in the last six to twelve months, or whatever, and you feel you deserve to. Um, it might just be a simple case if you're just not eating quite a, the right the right amount of food. You're maybe just eating a bit too much, or you are overcompensating um, at the weekends and stuff. So, I so I don't know. Like fat, fat loss itself, like you, you can't always be in a fat loss phase. You've also got to remember that it's a short term thing. So the vast majority of the year, I would never ever try and lose extra fat. It will be maybe a couple of times a year at the most. It will be more a case of just trying to build on performance and strength by fueling the workouts with the right nutrition and not worrying about trying to lose, it's more about trying to get stronger and building muscle tissue. And by building muscle tissue, your body percentage will drop anyway um, as long as your fat tissue doesn't go up. So that's worth thinking about, um, that you can't stay in a fat loss phase for long. And if you're constantly feeling tired or you're constantly feeling like a bit 
down or, or drained physically or emotionally, you've got to remember that like a fat loss phase is also is a stress. So it's probably not a good idea to, to stay in that phase for very long um, and to try and listen to your body. So it's very easy. A lot of folk, when they're chasing weight loss, They'll, they'll often like start eating less and exercising more. Um, but that, that's the sort of model of weight loss that we know doesn't actually work long term. Like statistically, if you start eating less and exercising more, if it's too extreme, then it's something happens called metabolic compensation. And eventually, if you, if you don't get the scales quite right, if you, if, you, if you don't get the tipping point quite balanced, then all you end up doing is losing a lot of weight quite quickly. The weight that you lose won't, all be fat because you can only lose fat at such a rate. So you know. So that means that if you're losing quite a lot of weight, a lot, a lot of the weight you're losing will also be muscle tissue. And then longer term, there tends to be a bit more of a rebound effect. Um, as soon as you stop the exercising more than the the eating less thing, which a lot of folk tend to do. So it's about ma- making sure you're not going to extremes. Generally speaking, um, you should try and aim to. If you're exercising more, you should be eating more, okay, which maybe sounds a bit strange, but that's what you should do, because if you're exercising more, you need to eat more to fuel the workouts and to build muscle tissue, um, and what that will almost guarantee, or it should guarantee in a lot of cases if the food, like lean protein and things, is that you'll build a bit of muscle, but you'll lose a bit of body fat. Um, so the other option is that if you find yourself not exercising for whatever reason, maybe you're sick or you get you're ill or something's just stressing you out, then then you just eat less. Um, so in other words, your best bet is to eat less if you're if you're exercising less, and eat more if you are exercising more. Um, as opposed to if you're eating less and exercising more, that is that is not a, a very good idea, except for a very short space of time, um, which is going to possibly result in a fat loss phase. But it's it's a it's a fine balance because if you don't do it right or if you do it for too long, you'll end up just losing too much weight and you'll crash. You'll feel like crap. Your performance will drop and you'll end up rebounding. So um, again, I don't really have an agenda every time I make these videos. I end up sort of talking in tangents a wee bit and just going off on, on different angles. So whether or not this is this is completely confusing you or not, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> but you can let me know. Um, but yeah, so is it? Consider what your lifestyle is in relation to your current sort of levels of health and body fat, and if you're not satisfied, then you need to ask yourself if you're making enough of a conscious, continuous, consistent effort to change the habits that have got you to where you are in the first place. If that makes sense, because um, it's not just going to suddenly click. It's not going to suddenly just start changing unless you've changed your habits. Um, if you've been the same way for a while, okay, if, if that makes sense. So bear that in mind. Um, and those that have been made really good progress and then plateaued, you might have to recognise that the only way you're going to get further progress is by changing changing things again, perhaps by eating a wee bit less um, of certain things or cutting out a few snacks or, or, or whatever, or keeping your diet exactly the same but in, introducing more activity. Um, but I would say don't do both. Don't don't at the same time add more activity in and eat less uh, because that's going to very quickly like it's going to be too much of a, an imbalance. So the key, the key is to try and maintain some sort of level of balance and equilibrium so that you're you're still maintaining like an energy level, a good energy. You should feel good um, when when you're doing this, and it's only every so often that you should go through a sort of fat loss phase per se where you're really trying cut cut in and dial in a wee bit as um as I'll try to do a wee bit in the next few, few weeks. But I'll do it subtly. I'm not gonna at the end of the day it's just a photo shoot. It's not like I'm trying to go on a bodybuilding stage, I'm not a bodybuilder, so I don't need to get to five percent body fat because if I do that then I feel like crap and I won't be able to squat properly and I won't be able to sprint fast. So bear these things in mind. Again, as I say, I'm not I've not got agendas here when I when I make these videos, so it's maybe which is maybe a bad idea. So if any of what I've said has helped, maybe let me know. But if you've felt like I've touched on things but not elaborated enough on them because I'm just kind of talking out loud then let me know and we can perhaps go into a bit more further detail um, of things. Thanks.